Today, we're gonna to talk about watering tips and some techniques that will help you in your garden, particularly in those long dog days of summer. When your plants begin to stress a little bit, they don't perform as well. And watering is a key element to making sure you have a beautiful garden or just plants on your patio. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Whether it's your lawn, beds, containers, or even house plants, we're gonna to touch on them. The Garden Home Vlog is made possible by the following sponsors, Gilbert H. Wild & Son, Sun Patience, Arkansas Parks & Tourism, Ralston Family Farms, First Community Bank, and Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. For more information, log on to pallensmith.com. Now back to P. Allen Smith and the Garden Home Vlog. Hey, I'm really excited that you've joined us today to learn a few techniques about watering. Hopefully this will be a time saver for you and also a water saver. Water is a precious resource that we all need to be more conscious of how we use water in our day-to-day -day life. Let's start with lawns because they take an incredible amount of water. I once read a statistic that there is enough lawn in the United States to, if you added it all up, it'd be the size of Pennsylvania. That's a lot of lawn that's getting watered and fertilized. Um, if you don't have an irrigation system, uh, a sprinkling system that keeps your lawn watered, um, going to some of the waterers like this, we use these uh, fan waterers and these old fashioned sprinklers, which are a lot of fun. If you have kids or grandkids around, these are fun to put out on a, on a lawn and let them run through the water. I have fond memories of that as a kid, and I bet you do too. Um, the thing you want to think about with, with watering the lawn is do it on off-peak times, not during the heat of the day either. So ideally, it would be very early in the morning is the best time to water your lawn. Um, you can use, um, of course, a, a water hose that can connect to a timer, and you can set this timer up uh, at the spigot um, and turn it on, and it will uh, water at a certain time and beyond for a certain time. These things come in a range of um, sizes and price point and sophistication, I might say. This one was less than 10 bucks. It has a seven year warranty on it and it's very uh, manual and mechanical, easy to use. You can go all the way up to 150 bucks if you want for one of these, it's electronic. Uh, there are a lot more bells and whistles on those, but this is a way to, um, monitor how much water you're putting out on your lawn. The other thing is about lawns that you want to keep in mind is the length of the grass. Uh, you want the grass typically to grow longer in the summer because the longer blades shade the roots and that helps cut down on watering. If you've got large trees and you may have an irrigation system, we have this, this problem. Um, even though you have an irrigation system, the large trees will take a lot more water than say open lawn and so sometimes we have to augment uh, that irrigation with the hose and an old-fashioned sprinkler and a timer. Okay now let's talk a little bit about um, watering your containers because container gardening is really uh, quite popular. Um, I just take my hand and stick it along the edge of the pot to see if it's moist. Um, this, this plant feels perfectly fine. It's a beautiful lantana. You can get water meters that will help you if you're not confident uh, in knowing whether the plant needs, needs moisture or not. I just think that consistent moisture with most plants, not over watering them, not drowning them, not killing them with love, is the way to go. Um, saucers um, under a, a plant like this are essential they will cut your watering time in half and your use of water. So use saucers and, and um, you know, depending on the time of, of the summer, if we've had a long stretch, and not much rain, I may fill up the saucer once a day. Now I can also water directly from uh, the top, uh, but rather than just taking a hose and putting water in like this, uh, you get a harsh stream off it, and I really like these wands, these watering wands. They give you a range of how the water actually comes, comes out. Um, what I tend to like is a, a mist or a shower. And what you do is you can spread the water more evenly and the water comes out 
in a gentler way and doesn't throw soil out and disrupt the plant. And uh, I love to take a cup of coffee in the morning and walk around with the with one of these wands and watering my containers. It's a really great way to get the, the morning started. Um, these we have, I use these to clean, of course, the, the driveway and so forth. I don't really recommend these for, for watering containers. They're just too forceful and you're blowing soil typically out and you could really even damage the plants. Uh, the best time to water your containers, of course, again, is early in the morning. But the reason for this, both lawns, containers, or your flower beds, is that if you water at night, um, you have all night long for these soil-borne fungi or um, pathogens that might be on the leaves and so forth to proliferate. So you're creating the perfect environment for a fungal problem. So if you wait until the morning and water, the sun comes out, dries off the excess moisture, and you don't have those problems typically. So it's just something to keep in mind. Some other ways to, to keep a container alive and looking really great is to just use a drip system. And I've brought one of, a, one of the ones that, that I use in here for you to see where you can just hook this up to a water hose. Um, and then you get a spike here that can hold the system in place. And there are all these little emitters that you can just put on the ends like this. And it will drip water into the container. And it's a great way to be frugal with water. I mentioned it before, we all need to be in conservation mode when it comes to, to watering plants. And this will also ensure that you're not watering them too much. And if you think about putting this system on the timer, that even adds a little bit more efficiency to what you're doing with your water. So these little um, drip irrigation systems are, are very inexpensive. And you, what I like to do is, is bring them around and up behind the container so you don't see this brown uh, tubing. Only problem with it is that you could always see the tubing, so I'm looking for ways to mask it or hide it. This brown color works very nicely in the garden because it's a, a neutral. In your flower beds, if you're watering, again, I go back to if you're hand watering, use the wand. Um, soaker hoses work really well. Um, these drip systems can also extend into beds um, and you can cover them with mulch and you don't see them and they'll get a consistent drip. And that's really the best for the plants. Overspraying plants with an irrigation system is not ideal. For the reason that I brought up earlier, you just have issues with disease. And so if you can uh, put a, um, a drip line in your beds uh, to water your plants, it works really well. These soaker hoses are a classic. I've used them for years. Um, eventually, they'll, they will come to the end of their life. But coiling these up in raised beds, I've done this in our little vegetable garden in the uh, downtown garden. And that works really well. You can make your own soaker hose if you like, just by taking an old old water hose like this. And you can take an ice pick or a punch. This little punch was about three bucks. And um, you just take the punch and push it into the hose like this. It makes a little hole. So if you've got an old uh, line of water hose that you want to use, you can make your own soaker hose. You can see the, these uh, holes that I made just by taking this punch and applying some pressure there. Um, one of the old techniques uh, for watering is to um, have some sort of vessel next to a plant. I've done this with tomato plants. As you know, tomatoes can suffer from the lack of consistent water. That's what causes a blossom end rot that you often see. If you um, just take a a milk jug like this and bury it next to the tomato or peppers or whatever you have. Maybe you have a young tree that you're getting started. But just take a punch like this and just puncture a few holes in the bottom. And when you bury this, you'll, you'll have the cap here. Take the cap off. You can take water and fill it up cap back on it and over the course of a few days just a few holes all you need the water will slowly 
uh, percolate out of this and around the plant. Now this goes back really to methods used by um, people long, long ago when they would actually plant large uh, terracotta pots or bowls, um, not really bowls, but uh, jugs with small holes. Uh, and the terracotta is very porous, as you know, and the water would um, slowly leach out and the roots would draw moisture from the edge of that terracotta container. And this is just a take on that, recycling a, a plastic milk jug. Um, when it comes to having plants in containers, of course there are a lot of different self-watering containers that you can look at. Many of them are very inexpensive. Um, this one was less than $20 uh, and it comes with a three-year warranty. You can just fill in water here in this reservoir. Um, and it, I like how tight it is here. It'll keep your pets from drinking some of that water out of the edge of it. If you have cats or dogs, you may want to have something like this. Um, and the other thing that's so great about these self-watering containers is what you like to do in the summer sometimes is just lock and leave, lock the house and leave and go on a little vacation. You can fill these up and you can go without worrying about coming home to your plants and them not looking like much. Um, now, for house plants, one of the things that I like to do is to take gravel. And if you look closely over here, you'll see I just use just a simple clear plastic tray and I put some of these gravel in here. And just filling this with water up to the level of the pot allows the evaporation of water off of these pebbles. That evaporation will come up underneath the leaves of the plants and sort of bathe the underside of the leaves with moisture. This is particularly good for plants that struggle inside, like maidenhair fern, some of the fern varieties that uh, maybe the house is a little too dry for it. So not only are you providing consistent moisture, for the roots, but you're also bathing the plant in much needed humidity. You really don't have a lot of problems with a tough plant like a croton like this, but the point is uh, I do have the croton in a, in a dish here, a plastic dish that I can sit on the floor or on a rug without any chance of that rug being damaged. You don't want to use terracotta or clay or ceramic saucers under your containers because they're so porous, uh, they're going to leave a ring on the floor or on your carpet. That's why this clear plastic works really well. Now there's some other things to think about when it comes to water conservation. One is to group the plants that have similar water needs together. That makes it easier on you, and you can be a little more conservative with the water and how it's distributed in your garden. Um, same would go with clustering your containers and so forth. The other would be your plant selection. This idea of doing away with a lawn and going native um, is very attractive and a lot of people are doing it. And these plants require very little water for the most part. We're seeing this um, uh, around the country in all parts of the country. I think it started really in the western states, but now it's really really spread. You see this a lot in Europe as well. And then of course, um, retaining moisture in the soil with just good old fashioned mulch. Uh, that goes a long way to helping keep the plants um, consistently moist and that's the key. You just don't want them to become dry because it really um, slows down their ability to, to spring back and be beautiful for you. Um, say for instance, azaleas, if they go through a period of dryness when they're trying to set buds and they don't have adequate water, you're really not going to get a very good display of blooms the following year. Even though your plants may make it through, they may live, you're going to really miss out on a beautiful display of flowers. I hope these tips on watering have been helpful to you. It's an essential part of a beautiful garden. If you like what you've seen, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to be notified, just ring the bell and happy gardening until next time.